Welcome back to Let's Play Mist. But wait a second, I can hear you say. This isn't Mist. It's real Mist. To which I can only say, Well spotted, Sherlock. I'm not gonna do a full Let's Play of real Mist, but real Mist contains one more age that is not present in the uh, original game. The Age of Rhyme. And look. There is the journal for that age. The Age of Rhyme helps bridge the gap between Mist and Riven, so I thought it would be interesting to take a look at it. Before we do so, however, I'd like to provide a little bit of background about Real Mist. After Riven was finished, Cyan began to concentrate on a new project codenamed DIRT, which stands for Dunny in Real Time. It was meant to be a game using real-time 3D, which would start off at the cleft and have the player descend into the volcano and down the great shaft and then further into the tunnels leading uh, to Dunny. And along the way, the player would encounter many of the obstacles that Tiana and Atrus also faced along this route and uh, would read journals by the two of them. The player would also have access to various ages from the rest areas, including Noloben, although this version was very different in concept from the one we ended up seeing in Mist 5, and Taladon. Finally, the game would end with the player arriving in the Great City. Dirt would use a real-time 3D engine called Plasma, developed by Headspin Technology, a company that Cyan acquired. However, Cyan's interest shifted towards an online multiplayer game, and the Dirt project was never completed, although much of its content was later used in Uru and Mist 5. This new multiplayer game, which was codenamed Mudpie and would eventually become Uru, required significant rewrites to the Plasma game engine because the original didn't have the networking support they needed. While work was in progress on Plasma 2, they used the original version of Plasma to create Real Mist. Real Mist, although completely unlike Dirt in story and content, borrows a lot of its internals from Dirt. Okay. Of course, Real Mist affords us an opportunity to get a better look at some things on the Island of Mist. For one thing, as you can see, there is a day-night cycle. It is currently night. Night lasts about five minutes on Mist. And of course you are able to walk around much more freely than you could in the uh, old game. Making it far easier to see where certain things are and the layout of some things. For instance, much easier to get a view of the tower, and I do believe you can actually see which way it is facing in uh, this version. Sort of tempting to think that you could walk up there. But you are eventually stopped. Although, of course, we couldn't walk behind the uh, planetarium at all. In the original mist. One other thing that you can see in uh, real mist, which is also present in the dilapidated version of mist seen in mist 5, is Tiana's grave. Yes, as I already said, Anna, Atrus's grandmother, who in Dunny was known by the name of Tiana, met an unfortunate end in one of Catherine's ages and was buried here on Mist, the age that she herself had written. And we can see her grave is covered with blue flowers. Presumably that grave is there, also in the uh, original version of Mist, as well as the Masterpiece Edition, we just can't actually go there. Butterflies are still hanging out, except instead of a video, they're now actually 3D. Water seems to be a lot less calm as well. Although, fortunately, 
The ways are not high enough to prevent us from crossing bridges like that. Is it me, or does this tree seem to be a lot less tall than it was in the original? It might be! And over here is, of course, the uh, spaceship. Which I actually can't go into, because I kind of cheated. Eh, it won't open. You see, I did not actually play through the entire game in order to r show you this bit. Because, since unlike in Riven, the combinations used in Mist are not random. So, if you know how to open the vault, and uh, that of course requires being able to get to the uh, final marker switch over there, so you also need to know the uh, 240 combination for the clock tower. And if you know the combination to use in the fireplace, then there is no reason to play the rest of the game, because you can immediately go to Dunny, uh, give Atris the page, and um, then you're done, essentially. Alright, let's take a look at the thing that we actually came here for. The Age of Rhyme. Well, as you can see, Atreus uh, took care of his sons in the same manner here, as he did in uh, the Masterpiece Edition, and the original version. But apparently during his trip to uh, Mist, he deposited here another notebook. Which I will now, of course, read. It's not very long, though. Let's take a look. Rhyme, I have named it. A desolate age with a beauty that is quite different than I had expected or imagined. The intricate fetters of ice that fall from the sky are awe-inspiring. I feel as though I could sit and watch them for hours. And though it is cold here like I have never experienced before, I find myself enjoying the change of temperature, for it is unlike any other place that I have ever seen. Perhaps the oddest thing is the silence. Although the wind blows on occasion, when it ceases, there is a suffocating silence that falls on this place, broken only by the distant cries of unseen creatures. I have visited three times, and am sure now that this age will provide the environment I need. I believe the cold temperature is necessary for obtaining the correct resonance. Examining the structure of the books is ever more perplexing, but I am driven onward by my need to understand. The great tree of possibilities can never be fully grasped, but I must at least try to find one particular branch. On the subject of enlightenment, I would also like to find the cause of the mysterious lights that shine in the darkness here. Though I never assumed that it would, I would be able to build especially fast here, the speed at which I am progressing is somewhat disappointing. I do think I will bring Cirrus and Akinar, as well as some of the machinery from Selenitic. Akinar chose to stay with Catherine, but Cirrus was rather excited to come. He has spent the last few days here with me, helping with me with the beginning phases of construction. He too seems to enjoy the ice and cold weather. He is intrigued with the crystals that we have brought with us. He has been a big help, as have others, and I hope to be able to begin my experiments here soon. Tonight, Cirrus and I found a wondrous spot to view the lights, although it seems they decided to hide from us. After sitting in the cold winds for over two hours, we saw nothing. It was rather disappointing. Cirrus will return to Mist tomorrow. He has been a tremendous aid to me, and I am thankful for his willingness to help. The hard part of the construction is over, although I have decided after tonight that I would like to add some kind of observation post. I won't be finished as soon as I had hoped, although I am fairly certain it will be worth the delay in the long run. I have decided to take a break from the construction now that the tunnel is almost complete, and I have been able to set up a temporary space where the crystals will not be stimulated. I am quite convinced that with the right diffractive resonance, certain properties of the ink can be simulated. Catherine still finds it absurd and thinks I am crazy to assume I will be able to view ages with stones, but her unusual pessimism has not convinced me to stop trying. I came too close to success on Everdunes. 
I'm fairly certain now that temperature indeed does have an effect on the crystals, but I've realized that temperature alone is not enough. The cold dampens some of the sympathetic harmonics, but a more active suppressor is necessary. I've acquired some geodes with a pure protected crystalline interior. Thin slices of the geodes below each crystal provided a stabilizing effect and even amplified the clean frequency slightly. After quite a bit of experimentation with the shapes and colors, I was able to capture a blurry image within a book. Though the link would never work, there was clearly an age on the other side. I can hardly wait to return and tell Catherine. I feel like I should finish the shaft to my observation post while I have the machinery here, perhaps tomorrow morning. The lights were beautiful again last night. They had not shown themselves for so long that I had almost forgotten their beauty. I still must find the cause. I am feeling rather overwhelmed with what remains to be done. The crystals have not been perfected, the shaft is not finished, nor is the observation post, or even the lab. I have not seen Catherine for some time, and I long to spend more time with Akinar and Cirrus. Besides all of that, there are, far away in the back of my mind, the thoughts of my people, and our lost city. And we see here a picture that Aetris apparently drew of what we fans of Uru will of course recognize as the Arch of Carafe. And in fact it looks a lot like it does in uh, Uru, if not uh, identical, I think it is actually ident identical. And not at all like the sketch that is seen in the Book of Aetris. It seems that much of the um, design of the city that was used in Uru was already done for the Dunian real-time project. I dreamt again of them last night. I have seen the city in its worst condition, and still, its beauty overwhelmed me. Even now, as I visualize how majestic it must have been before the destruction caused by Viovis and Agaris, it amazes and saddens me. I suspect that this is probably a Gura. Viovis and Agaris, of course, are references to names from the book of Tiana. I'm fairly certain that Dunny is not dead, as my father believed. I'm convinced that there must be some who managed to escape the destruction, and even now continue to survive in separate ages. Within me is an urging to take the chance and return to Dunny to find these survivors, and properly rebuild our city. However, I can't do nothing until I am certain of the fate of my father. If my plan failed, if I missed a single book when attempting to trap him on Riven, then he has been free all along. If that is true, then all that stands between him and the ages I have now written is the link from Dunny to Mist. As much as I wish to return to Dunny, without knowing the state of my father, I cannot risk re-establishing that link. I must observe my father without re-establishing that link. It has taken several years, and there have been many dead ends, but I have partially succeeded. Now that I have managed to view another age using the crystals, it is only a matter of time until I have you riven. At least I hope. Catherine will have her ideas about all of these things, and I miss her greatly. I will return to the rhyme later, when my mind is cleared. And there are some drawings here. This actually appears to be the control panel for the viewer. Set to 40, the combination of the uh, dimensional imager. But we didn't notice it collapse when... Uh, let's turn to that setting. And this appears to be a top-down view of that very same imager, indicating something on the back of it. Again, a drawing of the imager. And a number, 2735. If I were to guess, I suppose this has something to do with how to get to Rhyme. But we'll have to figure that out in the next video.